Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody on the phone line and also on the internet. Glad to be here myself and deal with the Word of God as we bring in another Sabbath. We know we, we should know we need in this world, we definitely need to stay on top of dealing with the Word of God because it's easy to get off track. I can remember years ago when I first came into the Word, probably in, in 1985 when I first went to Brother Bowie class, I knew I was crazy. I said, boy, y'all need to be open every day because I need help. <laughs> I, at least I knew it, though. Some of y'all don't know it, that y'all crazy. <laughs> I said, y'all need to have every day, because it's, it's rough out here. But uh, we're going to get into tonight's lesson, and we're going to talk about something that's prevalent nowadays and been prevalent all along, and that is fornication. And obviously everybody didn't heard of fornication, but it's not too many people really saying too much about it nowadays like a lot of other things in the Bible because one of the biggest misteachings that we have is that God's law has been done away with and Jesus died for our sins and we, we okay with that. That's all we need. So that puts, puts people relaxed, puts them at ease right away because you doing away with giving people the responsibility that they supposed to have. Now Jesus died to get us out of the trouble we was already in. You shouldn't get back in no more trouble once you find that out. He did die to get you from under your sin. So why would you go back and continue to do that? He's telling you he's not the, he's not going uh, the minister of sin, so to speak. Paul tell you that. So that's one of the biggest. <clears throat> false teaching, doing the most damage in the world, telling people that they don't have to do anything when the whole Bible is warning you. So people kind of just gone about their business, doing what they've been doing before they even supposedly heard about the Lord. But the Bible is warning you, even then, now this is the New Testament, because people say, well, I'm a New Testament Christian, and in the New Testament, it's so good, we don't have to do nothing. Jesus did it all. Look, if that was the case, Paul wouldn't be mentioning this, and we wouldn't be ready to read all these scriptures, Old and New Testament, showing you that this is an important responsibility. This is life and death. So that's the title, fornication, the deadly sin. Fornication, the deadly sin. And we're going to start off at 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Now, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. Because just because you hear about the Lord don't mean you're going to automatically be where you're supposed to be at and not have no problems. That's why Paul is preaching this to them. They had heard about the Lord, but he had to remind them of their responsibility and that warn them that they can't get caught up in this. And it's hard now because the whole world does what they want to do. Even the whole church world, as a whole, people go to church, they was fornicating before they went to church, and they fornicate in church, committing adultery, the whole thing. That's why the Lord is going to have to come back and kill up practically everybody in this world, because people don't change, even though some of them say they believe in God. They think you just going to get a pass. But that's not the way it is. You got to set your life up around what God is commanding. So his commandments can't be done away with. If it was, Paul wouldn't say this here. Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 18, read that. Flee fornication. See, he said flee it. Now, if I didn't have to worry about it, if Jesus died for my sins, you ain't got to tell me to flee nothing, do it. He died for my sins. I'm saved by grace. People say that all the time. Saved by grace, well, what does that mean? That don't mean you don't have to do nothing. 
that means you got a chance in spite of what you already done did. So he said, flee fornication. That means you need to get away from it. You need to get away from it. But even people who hear about the Lord, we still influenced by the world. And the world don't stop fornicating. And it's all types of fornication. We can't even get into all the fornication because fornication is any illegal sexual sin. And it's across the board. Just like you just had the president say he's in favor of fornication. Because that's what that is. Gay marriage is fornication. But he's in favor of fornication. Finally. But that's just one form. It, it can be a man with a woman fornicating. It can even be a, a man or a woman with an animal fornicating. The Lord tell you about that in the Bible. We don't have time to read it all. All of them kind of fall under adultery is specific and everything else fall under that. But now he said flee it though, didn't he? Verse 18, flee Fornication. Go ahead. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, uh -huh. which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Uh -huh. For ye are bought with, with a price. Mm. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Okay, so he told you to flee fornication. He's telling you how how important it is, in verse 18, he said, Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Y'all should check the phone line because a, a number of people is, is texting me saying that it's, they can't hear on the phone. So he said, He that committed fornication. Now, he telling you how even you get, you in more jeopardy for fornication then the average sin, because he said every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. So you're, you all into that when you committing fornication. You all into that. Like it's a scripture in Proverbs, there could, you know, the Bible said don't commit adultery, the Ten Commandments, they say don't steal, don't kill. There could be a legitimate reason well, they wouldn't put you to death if you stole because you was hungry. He tell you that in Proverbs. He said, men don't despise a man for stealing if he hungry. He got to pay for it. That's still wrong. He going to end up having to pay the price. But it's not, even though it's breaking the Ten Commandments, in other words, there could be some rationale for that. You hungry, you ain't had nothing to eat. You would take your punishment by stealing you some food. But now, he said, he compares that to fornication and adultery. He said, there will, there will never be an excuse for you to do, get away with that. That's how bad that is. You won't never get away with that. You can't never come up and say, well, it's a reason for it. That's what he kind of told you. Yeah, try to explain that to, you know, like a, a, a man sleeping with another man's wife. Try to explain that to her husband and see how far you get with that one. So that's why that is totally deadly. So he said, he went on to say, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of, Holy, of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have a God, and ye are not your own. For ye are brought with the price. See, because Jesus paid the price to give us this opportunity. And we don't want to go back out the back door. You get out of jail and you go straight out of jail. Somebody paid your bail and you go straight out of jail and do the same thing they got you put in there. They let you out for what you did, yeah. You can't go out and talk about, I got a certificate. I don't have to keep the law no more. They just let me out. Here go my certificate. So I know I went before for robbing a bank, but I got a certificate now. Watch, I'm going to rob a bank. They can't do nothing to me. I'm going to show them this. That's crazy, isn't it? So why? See, people have been 
really confused about what the price Jesus paid, what it really means. It don't mean you could just sin. He said, yeah, I brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Verse 13. Back up to verse 13. Same chapter. Go ahead. Meat for the belly mm -hmm. and the belly for meat. Mm -hmm. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. See, now he's telling you the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. That's why he told you already to flee at 14. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Uh -huh. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Go ahead. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? Mm -hmm. God forbid. See, he said, shall I then do that? I suppose to be in Christ. He said, your body's supposed to be the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Uh-huh. For two said he shall be one flesh? See, he letting you know, look, it, 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 it is no easy way out of committing fornication. You locking yourself in, he said, even... Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two said he shall be one flesh. So you think you're going to commit fornication and, and get up and go on about your business? Lord, uh-uh. He going to pay you for that. Go ahead. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh-huh. Then he said what? Flee fornication. Uh-huh. Every sin that a man doeth is out the body. Mm -hmm. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. See, you getting in trouble. Now go to Exodus 20. Now that we know the New Testament not letting us off the hook, is it? Not letting you off the hook. And where did that all begin at? It began back in the Old Testament. Well, people scared to read the Old Testament, but I tell them they need to put the whole Bible away then. Because you can't believe none of it. If you're going to try to separate it, that's the biggest false teaching they got on the planet, saying, you know, the Old Testament done away with it, and we got the New Testament. It don't add up. The whole Bible is under the same cover. Exodus 20. And this is the Ten Commandments. You have a lot of people that could be in church, and they, they wouldn't imagine probably killing somebody. But they don't have no problem having sex without being married. Without knowing the responsibility and knowing that you are putting yourself in a position to make a commitment. Exodus 20 and verse 13. Exodus 20 and verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. See, now this is the Ten Commandments. We're not going to read them all. But we should get the general idea. God said, thou shalt not kill. Now, a lot of people wouldn't imagine doing that. But he said more than that. What else he say? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So that's in the same breath, right? That's why he said in James, the second chapter, the same one that said don't kill, said don't commit adultery. So if you don't kill, but if you do one of the other ones, you're still sinning. You're still breaking the law. You're still in trouble. So you can't ignore anything. So when Paul was saying flee fornication, he got it honest because the Lord was warning you back here about this. Now go to Numbers 25. Numbers 25. So much for doing away with the law, though, and we don't, we don't have no, we don't have nothing to do but believe on Christ. Look, if you believe on Christ, you're going to do what he's he telling you to do. Numbers 25. Numbers 25, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. See, this is nothing new. Israel got the Ten Commandments, came out of slavery, and they still messed up with God. So that shows you, even those of us that got the truth and know we learning from the Bible, that don't mean it's a cakewalk. You got to watch yourself at all at all times. Because Israel had it, and this is what they started doing. 
That's why Paul was just warning the Corinthians who had heard the word, but he had to warn them about fornication. Because we could hear the word, and we could be feeling good about the word one day, but you ain't paying attention. You'll go out the back door the next day. 25 and 1. Go ahead. And Israel voted in Shittim. Mm -hmm. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. See? Now they had came out of Egypt. God had been talking to Israel. Face to face gave them all his commandments. That's what he was doing. We read a little bit of Exodus 20. So they abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom. What is whoredom? That's fornication. That's why he talked about being joined to an harlot in 1 Corinthians 6. So they, that's just another word for committing fornication. They began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. See, if we think today, even people that's been around the word, that we could just sleep with somebody and going about our business. Look, the Lord ain't going to let you. The Lord going to get you for that. That's why I be telling, trying to tell the young people, you got a chance to take it straight and do it the right way and make it right. But if you don't pay attention, you're going to be getting the same head whipping some, some of your parents got. And ultimately, the more you understand, the more responsible you are. So the Lord ultimately is taking people out. That's why he, that's why Paul telling you about how deadly fornication is. But now, verse 1, read it again. And Israel voted in Shittim, mm -hmm. and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. See, they started doing it. Skip down to verse 6, though. They began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab, a whole nother people, a whole nother nation. But go ahead. And behold. One of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman mm -hmm. in the sight of Moses mm -hmm. and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel mm -hmm. who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. See, people just get used to it. People just get used to it. That's why I understand. See, we can't stone nobody for doing contrary to the word of God now. But I truly understand why the Lord had people stoned and burnt and all kind of stuff because that will put the other people in check. The other people say, well, you, you see what happened? What's his name? <laughs> they, they have some real second thoughts about doing that, even when they wanted to do it. They have some real second thoughts. But we don't have that nowadays, but that don't mean you ain't going to get stoned or punished by God. Look at the way the world is. It's people sinning all over the world. People fornicating all over the world, even same-sex marriage, all kind of marriage. They even legalize. They, they, they so, it's stupid. <laughs> they had to, the army, the army had to change a law because they had a law coupled with another law. So they had a law saying, if you are, they kick you out the army if you are committing sodomy. They'll kick you out the army. So being that now they say that's kind of discriminatory, they're going to change that. So they was against, we know the army was against gay marriage. But in that same law, <laughs> where they will kick you out and punish you, you can be court-martialed for a man with a man, that same sex stuff. In the same sentences, they also said that you know, you can be court-martialed for sleeping with an animal, for bestiality, right? You can be court-martialed for that in the same sentence. So they couldn't change one without the other because it was coupled together. It was one law. So you know they just had to wipe away the whole thing. So they had in the newspaper, yeah, bestiality is okay too. So not only can you can two men sleep together and they ain't going to kick them out the army, you can go get your animal. And you can sleep with the animal. Because they couldn't change one without the other because it was one law. Let's show you how backwards man is. It's just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, they all, it's out the clock. But that's just one form of fornication. And we get so accustomed to doing it that it becomes second nature. So Israel, it said right here, verse 1, and Israel abode in Shittim, and, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And the Lord started to punish them. He started to kill some people. This is how deadly it was. 
They were sleeping around. Some brothers were sleeping around with these women. That's how it all started. And the Lord started to kill some people because it's deadly. Not only was they sleeping around with the women, they was going to worship the women's God. That's just double jeopardy. The Lord started to kill people. Then this brother didn't get the memo, though. This brother at verse 6, he didn't get the memo. He was out having them a good time. He think the party's still going on. He came back with a chick. He didn't know. They put a stop to all that while you was gone. Pick it up at verse 6 again. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman uh -huh. in the sight of Moses. Uh, see, he just bold with it now. Because everybody been doing it. He said, oh, yeah, we can do it now. He brought in sight a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. Go ahead. And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Uh, he didn't get the memo. Go ahead. Who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. See, they already, the Lord had killed up a bunch of people while he was gone. And they weeping before the tabernacle of the congregation because the people that got killed and they know they in trouble. But he didn't know, but he found out. How he found out? Verse 7. And when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, uh -huh. he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. No words. He didn't say nothing. This brother got up. He said, uh -uh, I'm going to put a stop to this mess right now. We just been getting plagued for this, and he going to start it over again? This brother, he got up, didn't say one word, got a javelin. Well, he, he might have said something. It don't say it here, right? But it wouldn't have been nice. It wasn't, hey, brother, how you doing? It wasn't that, was it? He took a javelin in his hand. We know it's about to be some drama, right? Verse 8. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent mm -hmm. and thrust both of them through, mm -hmm. the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. Uh -huh. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. See, see, the Lord was plaguing Israel, and he didn't know he going to continue to plague. He going to continue to play, but for Nias, he wasn't having it. He took that jab and put a stop to all that. Didn't take, didn't take too many words to do that, did it? He thrust the man of Israel and the woman through the belly so the plague was stayed. And let's see about how deadly the plague was in the first place, 29. Uh, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. Wow, that's a whole, that's really deadly, is it? But it all started from verse 1. It said they was committing horror with the daughters of Moab. See, we got examples like this in the Bible, but we don't pay attention to it because, you know, we figure people doing it around us and they don't get killed right away. The old saying is true. You might be getting by but you're not getting away with the Lord. That's why the Lord got, still got something called Judgment Day. You're going to answer for it all. But 20, it said 20 and 4,000 died. That's a whole lot of people that died for fornicating, right? Verse 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the, the, Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, have turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, uh -huh. while he was zealous for my sake among them, mm -hmm. that I consumed not the children of Israel and my jealousy. See, it, the Lord wasn't mad at him, was he? The Lord said, matter of fact, he did a good deed. If it wasn't for him, him I'd still be killing some of y'all. He turned my jealousy away from the children of Israel. He was zealous for my sake among them. The Lord said he, 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 he did what he did right on time because you think it was bad 24,000. But that stopped the whole plague. Go ahead. Wherefore, say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. The Lord made a special covenant with him for that. And he killed somebody, two people. Let's show you how, how much the Lord hate fornication, just like he talked about hating divorce. But go ahead. And he shall have it. And his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, uh -huh. because he was zealous for his God uh -huh. and made an atonement for the children of Israel. See, that was an atonement. Killing that foolish brother and the woman. Killed both of them. Since they got killed, we might as well find out what their names was. Go ahead. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, 
was Zimri, mm -hmm. the son of Shalu, a prince of a chief house among the um, Simeonites. Simeonites, yeah. Right. So he come from a big family in Israel, right? He come from a prince. But did that save him? Uh-uh. 15. And the name of the Midianites woman that was slain was Cosby, uh -huh. the daughter of Zer. He was head of, over a people and a chief house in Midian. Uh-huh. And the Lord spake Okay, that's good. Skip down now. To, back up to verse 9 now. Back up to verse 9 because we're going to read one more thing and go back to the New Testament. Because nothing changed in the New Testament. Only thing, of course, now that just because nobody is going to get killed right away don't mean that it's okay. And people are getting killed right away. It just ain't nobody is not carrying it out legally. But you got people all over the world fornicating, right? And you got people all over the world dying all kind of ways. Well, we committing all types of sin, but you got all kind of drama in this world. You got a lot of young men fornicating. You got a lot of young men getting killed. You got a lot of young men in prison. Back up to verse 9. And those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. I want to read that again. Go to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Let's see if we just do away with the Old Testament because they was too hard back there. That's what people think. Oh, they was too hard back there. They didn't give you a chance. I guess, you saw, I guess some of the modern day preachers will say, now... Nah, for Nia shouldn't have did that. The Lord praised him for doing that, right? <clears throat> See, obviously we can't do that now because then they'll put you in jail. But that just shows you how the Lord feel about it. But when you caught up in the world, he was caught up in the way they was doing things for that brief moment, and he went with it. When you're caught up in the world, you do the same thing, but you're going to end up reaping the rewards of the world. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea. Uh-huh. Now that's good. Now he's talking about the same time back in Moses' time when they went through the Red Sea and they had went through there by what we was reading in Numbers. They was out in the wilderness when they started committing whoredom with the daughters of Moab. But he was talking about that same time frame. So let's see. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Uh -huh. They were overthrown in the wilderness. Now we just saw an example of that. We saw when they was committing whoredom, fornication. God wasn't pleased, right? And some of them got overthrown right then in the wilderness, right? It said 24,000, right? That was a whole lot to die just to have a little fun that lasts a few minutes. Go ahead. Now these things were our example. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. Oh, now he's talking about the old days. He's not saying, don't worry about that. You got Jesus now. Paul didn't say that, did he? He didn't say, just do away with the Old Testament. Don't read numbers about that mean God back there because we got a real gracious God now. Look, God is gracious, but he's not stupid. He require you to change your ways. And you could change. I know you could change because I was a big time fornicator. And I thought it was going to be impossible for me to stop doing all the fornication. I was, but I kept reading the Bible. It got a lot easier. And easy and easy, the more I read, the easier it gets. Because when you learn the consequences of your action, that will give you some incentive. So he said, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Now they made it out of Egypt, out of slavery, through the Red Sea, was in the wilderness, getting to know God. He gave him his commandments. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Verse 6. Now these were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. See, this is an example that we shouldn't make the same mistake they made. We shouldn't do away with the example, should we? How are you going to do away with an example that's warning you of death? You wouldn't want to do that. 
That's an example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they lust. This is the New Testament, verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters. See, they did that. That's, that's false worship. We're doing that all over the place. God hate all of this stuff. Go ahead. As were some of them, mm -hmm. as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink mm -hmm. and rose up to play. See, but we ain't dealing with that today. What are we dealing with? Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication. Oh, neither let us commit fornication. We warned again not to do it. He already told you, flee fornication in the sixth chapter, right? Now we're in the tenth chapter. He said, neither let us commit fornication. See, we have to be reminded of that. Especially when you've not already fornicated before and you, you had fun, you liked it, and if you're not paying attention to the word of God, you would do it again. But he warned you not to do it because you're going to pay. Neither let us commit fornication. So that shows you clearly that's what they was doing. What we read, they just used another word. I told you that's the same thing. It said they committed whoredom, right? That's what he, he quoting that right now. Neither let us commit fornication as what? As some of them committed. As some of them committed. They did it, but they didn't get away with it. Go ahead. And fell in one day three and 20,000. See, three and 20,000. It's a little bit off, right? See, people say, oh, well, see, the, the Bible's messed up. Look, different people might write it different, just like me and Devin can see the same thing. He might have said 10. I might say 15. But that's because of the evidence, the way we was looking at the evidence, differently. But the bottom line, one thing is a consensus. We both saw some bad stuff happen. We know that for sure, right? So this is the same time. It ain't nothing but a thousand off. 23 and 24, okay, give or take a thousand. We can just say a lot of people got killed, right? Same time. He said, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell. You mean in one day? Fell in one day. We saw that, didn't we? And it would have been more if it wasn't for who? For Nias. Would have been more if it wasn't for Aaron's uh, grandson with that javelin. He did some good work with that javelin because he saved some people's lives by killing two. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. That's a lot of people to die for a small amount of fun. Go ahead. I'm sorry, that's it. Go to uh, Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Back to the Old Testament. Now that we should know that there's nothing wrong with reading the Old Testament, a lot of people think it is. That's why they even got an erroneous term, a New Testament Christian. That's an erroneous term. You got to be a Bible Christian, a Bible follower. You can't be a New Testament. If you, but if you are a New Testament believer or follower, you ain't going to have no problem with the Old Testament. They saying the same thing. He just referred you back to it and said, don't do what they did. So it's the same spiel. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. And we're going to read one verse. Leviticus 19 and verse 29. Leviticus 19 and verse 29. People want to do away with it, right? They want to do away with the Old Testament. That don't make no sense at all, brothers and sisters. That's why the world is so jacked up. That's why people go to church, can't stop doing the stuff they doing because you need to be encouraged and admonished and told and told again to get your act together so you can get your act together you ain't gonna get it together going to some church and the man sugarcoating it for you telling you it's always oh, gonna be all right repeat after me it's gonna be all right you know stuff like that they just playing the game with you you ain't gonna get your act together you gonna think you all right you're going to leave there from fornicating the night before and go fornicate the next day and say to yourself, it's going to be all right, though. You're fooling yourself. But now, read that one verse, 19 and 29. Go ahead. Do 
not prostitute thy daughter mm -hmm. to cause her to be a whore, mm -hmm. lest the land fall to whore, mm -hmm. and that land become full of wickedness. Now, what's wrong with this? Should we throw away this? We don't need this no more, right? So we can all prostitute our daughters now, right? If you want to throw away the law and throw away the Old Testament, this ain't no good, right? That don't make sense, though, do it? He said, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whore. Well, I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, the world has failed to whore them. That's why, don't you, under, don't you know that they even talk about pornography and the porn industry is bigger business and make more money than football, baseball, basketball put together. Make more money than all of them put together. That's, that show you the land has failed, hasn't it? So he said, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Isn't the world full of wickedness? That's the way it is. The world is full of wickedness. But if you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to come out of that wickedness. Cause or else if you don't, you're going to die just like the rest of the world. Go to uh, Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Pick it up at verse 23. Proverbs 6 and verse 23. Okay, go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproof of instruction are the way of life. See? Now, we busy trying to do away with the law and not pay attention to the law, say we don't need it, it's done away with, we got Jesus, and that's why we're in the dark. But he's telling you, like we just read that one command. We read where he said, don't kill and don't commit adultery already, right? The Ten Commandments. But we read another simple law that said, don't prostitute your daughter, right? It's just like they had a big thing. They went to this town, I think, where in the country in South America, where the people, some of the Secret Service got caught up in prostitution, right? Well, you know, because that's because it's legal there. But they just didn't want to pay. But that show you the state of the world, though, right? But if you're going to follow God, you're going to come out of that because he said, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. Why would you want to do away with the light and stay in the darkness, right? The law is light. But Jesus told that himself. He said, light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light. See, you can come out of the darkness. You can make your mind up, but you got to get the right incentive. You got to know if you don't, you're going to die. That'll help you alone. People have done all kinds of stuff they thought they couldn't do. You might be a fornicator now. And think, that, oh, it's, it's too hard to stop. But you get the right incentive, you'll stop. People have done, done stopped other things they thought they couldn't do. But then they found out it was life-threatening. Hey, they stopped overnight. But you got to know. He said the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So to be taught the right way, be corrected, that's going to save you in the end. 24. To keep thee from the evil woman. Uh -huh. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. See, now he's talking about reproving you once you... Get taught the right way, even concerning committing adultery and fornication. If you follow the commandment and focus on that, that'll keep you. Some women might say, "Well, why, why, you know, why he talking about women? Look, he really, he really talking, he really talking to a man. 
to warn the man. That's who he's talking to, to warn the man. But he is talking about a woman that what we would call promiscuous. He is talking about that, but he really wanted the man because it don't matter what you say. Ain't no woman going to be able to make no man do nothing. See, so the responsibility still going to fall back on the man because the man don't do it. The woman couldn't do nothing. As some brother tried to say before, like the woman forced him. Come on, man. Uh-uh. He said, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Go ahead. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Lust not to her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. See, he warning the man. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Go ahead. For by means of, a, means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. See? See, this is in the Bible for a reason. You will get messed up. He telling, he warning the man, but obviously a lot of men don't care. See, and that's who really need to change. Everybody needs to look at their ways, but like I said, if the man don't do nothing, the woman ain't going to make him do nothing. She, she ain't going to be able to force him. So he said, by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. It's just like wanting, you know, it's good for women to know that they don't want to be like this woman. That's what you should get out of that if you're a woman. You obviously don't want to be like her and trying to entice some man to commit adultery or fornication. You don't want to be like her at all. But even if a woman was, he warned the man, don't get caught up in it. So it still would be staved if the man did what he was supposed to do. It's just like, I can, have, I can tell you about it. I've had numerous women try to hit on me, but hey, I told them, you can keep coming to church. Ain't nothing going to happen. Don't worry. But he said, by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. See, and, and when that happened, you can't blame the woman. He didn't warn you already, right? And what? And the adulterer will hunt for the precious life. See, this is a woman that's already is married, got somebody. And she trying to get somebody else trapped up. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. So, it's, that's why it's not enough to even, again, a woman don't want to be like that, but it's not enough to just tell women that, look, you don't want to be like that. People have been telling women that for the longest. People have been telling women that just like when I was growing up. Hey, mostly all the girls I knew, they was told, look, don't, don't, give, don't be giving your stuff away. Don't give it away. Keep your stuff on lock. They was telling the women that, the girls that, they was telling them that, but wasn't nobody telling the boys that. The same people telling the women, look, don't do that. No, you ain't supposed to be a, be a lady. Don't do it. They were telling the boys, boy, you supposed to be going to get you some. Go and get you. Well, who the heck they going to get it from? It's backwards. Even when I was a teenager and I met Loretta and I started showing I was serious about her over 30 years ago. Even my own mother, she was kind of like looking at me, I suspect. She was like, what you getting serious about her for? She really, because that's just the, the way of the world. She thinking, well, you don't need to be getting, you too young for that. Look, if you old enough to be trying to sleep around with somebody, you old enough to stay with that one person. That's the thing that young people need to realize now. You ain't going to be able to lay down and get up and just go on about your business. 
And that's really one, one of the problems now. We living in a, 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 a world that teaches us you can kind of have it all. That you can just do it and then you still want to go on about your life. You can't do that. You got to make your mind up. And really people need to understand, especially young people need to understand, look, if you really, because we know sex is good. People enjoy sex. That's why they do it. God is smart. He made it that way. You, you know why he made it that way, don't you? Not so you can just fornicate and have some fun. That's what you thought. No, he didn't make it that way because of that. He made it that way because he told man to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. And God is wise. He knows you weren't going to do it. If it was like work, it wouldn't be nobody here. It wouldn't be. Especially, you know how hard it is for a woman to have a baby? Shoot. It wasn't no fun, and then you got to go through nine months of labor, too? Man, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't even be here. It'd be about five people in the world. But God is wise. He made it fun. He said, yeah, they're going to they gonna multiply, all right? You multiplying even when you don't want to. You ain't even trying to multiply. Pregnant again. So he's wise by making it that way, but we got to know that his responsibility come with that. So really, that's what young people need to understand if you think you're ready for that. I tried to tell my son that when he was 16. I ain't going to tell you which one. I got a couple of old and 16 now. I tried to tell him that when he was about 16. Look, you want to try to get frisky, y'all should just get married. He looked at me, I ain't but 16. What you talking about? No, what you talking about? What you thinking about? It looked like you thinking about trying to do something that married people do. Hey, I sign off. I, I'm the preacher. I will marry you. I told him that. I'm not lying. Got some witnesses in here. But, but we think that's crazy. The world tell you that's crazy, but go ahead and fornicate. Get you some rubbers. Something wrong with that. But you're going to end up paying either way. Because it's deadly. We see how, how deadly it is. But now, go ahead, verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? See, you can't get away from this. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Nope, go ahead. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? That ain't going to happen, is it? Go ahead. So he, so he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, uh -huh. whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. See, this straight up adultery going into your neighbor's wife. All forms of fornication fall under that. That's a form of fornication. But he said it ain't going to work. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. You can't get away from that. That's why Paul said flee fornication. Go ahead, 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. See, this is what I quoted earlier. He said it can be an excuse for you stealing. It's still wrong, but you can have kind of like an excuse where somebody won't come down on you as harshly as they might would have under the other circumstance. So men don't despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry, but what? But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. Mm -hmm. He shall give all the substance of his house. See, they won't even kill you for that. that but that tells you how deadly fornication is. What did he say? Go ahead. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He said, but whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Go ahead. He that doeth, it destroyeth his own soul. See, he putting the responsibility on the man too, is it? And he said, he that doeth, it destroyeth his own soul. See, fornication fall right under that. He said, he destroyeth his own soul. That's why Paul said, every sin that a man committeth without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his body, didn't he? 
That's why the Lord got all kind of diseases and stuff that go with it. But go ahead. A wound and dishonor shall he get, mm -hmm. and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Uh -huh. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. Okay, that's good. Go to Matthew 5. Let's go back to the New Testament now and see what Jesus think about that, because people want to make it different in the New Testament. Well, it's different, all right. We're going to see how different it is. He just was letting you know how deadly it is. Five and twenty-seven. Matthew five and twenty-seven. Go ahead. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, mm -hmm. thou should not commit adultery. Well, we heard that and we read it, right? See, we want to do away with the law, and the Bible say in the New Testament that the law is holy, just, and good. What can be wrong with that? Did Jesus think it was something wrong with it? Is he going to say, don't worry about it, now I die for you? He said, you heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, we read that, right? We read a number of things, but let's see what Jesus got to say. He's going to say something new. Go ahead. But I say unto you, mm -hmm. that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Is he telling you... Do away with that law and don't worry about it? Or is he enhancing it for you and telling you it's even a spiritual thing? Because this way you got to stop it and you got to get your mind together. Then you won't commit adultery or fornicate if you get your mind together. But you need to know how deadly it is that God is going to kill you. And even God got a loophole, even if you mess up, he letting you know you need to get married to him. See, people don't want to do, have that responsibility. He had a, he had a loophole because he know. He said, well, I know they're going to get frisky. So I'm going to even let them off the hook if they do the right thing. It's just like we didn't have some people in here. We didn't have, we got some good examples in here. We didn't have some teenagers that, hey, went out and had sex, but then turned around and they got married and did the right thing. And everything, you can live happily ever after. God ain't going to get you for that. But you got to do the right thing. That's what you need to understand. But now, and if, and if somebody is in the word, they should already know that. Therefore, if you know you're going to be stuck with this person, I didn't have people come to me and say, man, you know, I made a mistake and uh, I slept with somebody, but what do, I, what do I do now? I say, well, you need to marry her now. Oh, man, I can't see myself being with her. I say, you should have saw that a while ago. <laughs> Get mad. Some people done left. I ain't going back there. He trying to make me be with her. Hey, they had to leave. But what else I suppose to tell them? That's what the Bible say. That'll be your out if you do the right thing. But Jesus said, what ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou should not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whoso looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery already in his, with her already in his heart. He said, you'd have done it already. So it's just a matter of time before you mess up and go all the way. Because that's what's on your mind. Even if it don't be with her, it'll be with somebody else. So Jesus is not taking the responsibility away. He enhancing it. Really, he's telling you how to keep it in check. Because if you get it out your mind and make up your mind to do the right thing, then you can stay on top of it. Go to uh, Matthew 15. Matthew 15. So the New Testament is not giving you an easy way out of being obedient to God, or making it okay to commit fornication, is it? It's not doing that. And don't, don't think just because you might have done it and nothing happened yet that it's going to be okay. 
That's why the Bible says every sin in Hebrews 1, every, in Hebrews 2, every sin receives a just recompense or reward. Matthew 15 and verse 19. Matthew 15 and 19. Go ahead. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, mm -hmm. murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witnesses, blasphemy. See, that's why out of the heart, that's the mind. That's the mind. That's what Jesus just said. If you look at a woman and lust after you, done done it already. That show you he expects you to put that in check, don't he? And that show you you can do it. Believe me, you can do it because I never thought I could do it. I told you before when I first got in the Word, I thought I was going to be a schizophrenic because I was trying not to look at women because, you know, you just trained that way from real little. You just train that way, just lust out the women, boys out. That's why I say that's contradictory. You tell the girls don't do nothing and tell the boys go do it. So it's going to be a conflict. Somebody going to lose. Who been losing? Who been winning that battle? The, the boys been winning that one, ain't they? Because the girls end up giving in. But when I first was trying to get it together, it says like my head was spinning around on my neck. Trying to, like, what you doing? Oh, man, what am I doing? What's wrong? <laughs> but it's, it's in the mind. He said, for out of the heart proceeded, it comes from the mind. Before you do it, it's going to come, it's going to start in the mind. So that's where you got to address the problem at. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, that's an evil thought, right? See, but a lot of people wouldn't think about murdering nobody. But see, we think it's okay to commit fornication. And that's just as deadly. Father, the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, all of them right there together, right? Then he go on to theft, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20. These are the things which defile a man. Uh -huh. But to eat with unwashed hands defile not Now it's man. amazing that people come here and eat and, and used to read this. I had people that's in here tonight that quoted this to me to say they can eat pork. See? They, you know, it's, it's some more here that talk about it from the beginning. And he said, not that which go in the mouth defile you. That's what he was talking about. But that which come out. But they was concerned, and people still are concerned, we're trying to get around the dietary law saying you could eat anything. So, you know, we be preaching the dietary law. We tell somebody, you know, you shouldn't eat swine that's unclean. And they would quote this, this whole chapter. They say, well, no, it's not what go in the mouth that defile you. It's what come out. See, that ain't doing away with the dietary law. He talking about something else here, but he gave you the importance of what you do need to worry about coming out your mind. And it's back to the law, isn't it? So again, he, he upholding the law. But they say, no, nah, he said it's not what come out. It's not what go in, it's what come out. So that means I can put some pork in, it's okay. That's not what he's talking about, is it? I can put some pork in, it's okay. It's what come out. But see, they got all this stuff coming out, too. They had all this stuff coming out and wasn't changed because really they was taught they ain't had to do nothing. But he said, verse 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. That's what come out. Murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20. These are the things which defile the man. These are the things that defile a man. Now he's not going to say, this is what I had to read to him. He's not going to say to eat pork don't defile you. Because that's breaking the law, isn't it? But what did he say? But to eat with unwashed hands, the foul is not. See, that's what the conversation was. The tradition of men eating with unwashed hands. People want to throw pork in there. They want to throw all catfish in there. To eat catfish, don't defile. That's what they saying. Just pray over it. But see, they missed the bigger message in that. But we should have it. Go to um, Romans 1. He said it proceeded out of the heart. Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, all that comes from the mind. So that Jesus warning you, you got to flee from this, like Paul said, because it's going to kill you. Just because you ain't dead yet, don't worry.
See, and God's not telling you to do nothing that you can't do. You can do it. That's what people say they can't do. People, people quote, people want a new job. They be praying to the Lord, I want a new job. And then they like to quote Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. They want to get a house. They want a bigger house. The preacher have them tell them, look, just go believe you can get that house. Like one preacher on the west side of Chicago, he said, talk to the house. I go, that's what I do. I go talk to the, look, talk to the fornication. Talk to that. Because we, you could do all things but that. That's where they stop at. They draw the line. And, no, you can't keep that low. Mm-mm, you can't keep it. That's too hard. I thought you said you can do all things. And believe it or not, you can. You could do a lot more than you think once you make your mind up. <clears throat> Romans 1. He's not saying that for no reason. Romans 1 and verse 21. Go ahead. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Mm -hmm. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and foolish hearts was dark. See, he's talking about people that knew God, but didn't stay the course. See, we could be in here tonight, and we could know God for real, but we could go back door tomorrow. He said, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart, he said, was darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened. Remember, he said, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, fornications, adulteries, fornications, thefts, all that stuff. Jesus said, you heard it was said, don't commit adultery. But I'm telling you, don't eat. If you look at a woman and lust out, you can commit adultery already in your heart. So that's where it started. We're seeing that. Skip down to verse 24, because he darkened their foolish heart. Because if you don't get it together like the world is, see, the world didn't get all of this foolishness together when the opportunity was there and no better. Now it's all out the closet now, is it? Fornication all over the place. You didn't legalize. That's what he said in our psalm. He said, man, see, just because they make it legal don't make it right with God. He said, man would take iniquity and frame it with a law. It don't matter what, who say what, it don't matter what, ju what judge say is constitutional, what God say is going to be the final word. Romans 1 and 24, go ahead. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. See, if you don't get it together, God will give you up. He would give you up. Now, some people, they be kind of new in the word. And they be struggling, having a hard time. Look, that's the way it's supposed to be. When you've been doing something all your life, then you try to change. You're going to have a battle, but you can overcome that. But I had people that's been around a short time. They say, oh, it's rough. I think God then gave me up. Look, you just getting started. But if God gave you up, it wouldn't be no conversation about that. You wouldn't be nothing to say. You wouldn't even be worried about it because it, it, it would be a done deal. But he said, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves because they did what? 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie mm -hmm. and worshiped the, and served the creature more than the creator. That's what the world is doing now. Go ahead. Who was blessed forever. Amen. Uh -huh. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affection. Uh -huh. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman and burning their lusts one towards another. Mm -hmm. Men with men. Working that which is unseemly. See, that's, that's unseemly. Man with a man. Now, this is in the Bible. This is in your New Testament. For the New Testament people. It's in the New Testament. You only have to go back to the Old Testament to Leviticus, where it was first written at. If you have a problem with the Old Testament, it's right here. You can't get around that. And now it's okay. It's, it's legal. That... You can't even make that seem right to anybody that got a little sense. You can't even make, because he's telling you here, he said it's unseemly. That's just obviously wrong. You know, you have to really be brain dead to start going for that. And you mean to tell me the whole world is going for it? 
That tell you the state of this world, don't it? But, but I guess why not doing everything else wrong? He said in verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men. So he's talking about women with women, which you have. Sometimes it's hard to know that a woman is a woman. I was in L.A. and sister and brother with me said, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a woman right there. I said, what? <laughs> Looking just like a dude. <laughs> you got a lot of that. Loretta was out at the park with the kids playing baseball, and some woman told her, she said, that's, that's your child? She, she said, no, nah, I'm the baby daddy. <laughs> How in the world are you going to be the baby daddy? You really messed up. It's a good solution to all that, though, because then you had a big, big oversized brother Muscle-bound brother opened his mouth, sound just like a woman. The baby daddy, the woman, need to get with that brother and make it work. They can role play at home, but at least it look right. <laughs> Change roles at home, but come out in the street, at least it's a man and a woman. But go ahead, verse 27, read that again. And likewise also, men leaving the natural use of the woman and burning their lusts one towards another. Mm -hmm. Men with men. Men with men doing what? Working that which is unseemly. See, that's unseemly according to everybody Bible. Everybody got this Bible. That's unseemly. How in the world are you going to do this? And they, have, they like to quote from the Bible too. I love God. It's just love. I'm just in love. He said, it's unnatural. Men with men work in that which is unseemly, but see, they've been given over because they wanted to make it okay. And that's what God is warning you of, and that can happen to you just fornicating, a woman fornicating with a bunch of men, or a man fornicating with women. You can get turned over to that as well. Because that's what he's saying. You didn't want to listen to him when you had the chance. You want to believe a lie. So he said, in verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. That's the natural use, right? A man and a woman. Burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseen and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which is me. They doing it and doing it over, out the closet. Go ahead, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, mm -hmm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. See, that's what happened to the world, has it? A reprobate mind where your mind is just messed up and you're going to get out talking about it's okay. And making laws saying it's okay. See, politicians ain't never been no good because they go with the crowd. Wherever they think they're going to get the vote. It's an old saying, a good politician, he see which way the crowd grow and jump to the front of it. They don't care. That's why people tell me, well, I voted for Obama. I told you he was crazy. But go ahead. To do those things which are not convenient. Mm -hmm. Being filled with our... I'll be a Republican for... I go for some mess like that, I'm going to tell you. But none of it ain't going to matter, so I wouldn't be nothing. But I'm saying, we think, Israel think that we supposed to be Democrats. Well, hey, Democrats going for the, 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 you know, that's why they call them liberal. They go for everything. That's okay. But I know the Republicans going to give in to it too. Because whatever sell, they're going to go for pretty soon. They're going to be okay with same-sex marriage. Because whatever, whatever sell. But right now, 
At least they toe in the line. I applaud them for that. Somebody need to. At least, at least even the Pope saying it's wrong. Hey, he got that right. All the other stuff we might can point out that's wrong, Sunday not being a Sabbath day, hey, he got that right. Amen. But now, he said at 28, read it again. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do, to do those things which are not convenient. See, that's scary. God can give you over to do things that's not convenient. You think it's okay. To do those things which are not convenient. Go ahead. Being filled with all unrighteousness. See, we filled with something, but it's not good. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Filled where? Right in the mind, right? That's where it started at. Being filled with all unrighteousness. What's at the head of the list? Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Uh-huh. Covetousness. Mm -hmm. Maliciousness. Mm -hmm. Full of envy. Mm -hmm. Murder. Debate. Deceit. Malignity. Whisper. Oh, we got all that and more, don't we, nowadays? All that and more. That show you the state of the world we living in. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord going to do the same thing he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. He going to burn the sucker down. And it's only going to be a few people left. The Bible is telling you that. Go to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter, the second chapter. If you can't see the Lord going to have to come back and burn this down, you need to get you some glasses. 2 Peter 2 and 10. 2 Peter 2 and 10. Go ahead. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness mm -hmm. and despise government, presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity see now you got a lot of people that might complain about this and complain about that but doing the same thing that the rest of the world doing go ahead whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not really accusations mm -hmm. against them before the lord mm -hmm. but these are natural brute brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed Speak evil of the things that they understand not, mm -hmm. and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Go ahead. And re shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, mm -hmm. as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime, mm -hmm. spot that they are and that they are in blemishes, mm -hmm. sporting themselves with their own deceives, deceivings, while they feast with you. Uh huh. What else? Having eyes full of adultery. See, having eyes full of adultery. See, he can't stop. He said, I was full of adultery. Didn't Jesus say if you look and lust after the woman, you'd commit adultery already? Because that's where it's going to start at. But when you don't get it in check, then you got a big problem. He said, I was full of adultery. Now, this is the New Testament warning you about all of this wickedness. Eyes full of adultery. What else? And that cannot cease from sin. See, because once you go too far, you can't cease from sin, can you? That cannot cease from sin because God will give you what he said in Romans 1, a reprobate mind, right? That cannot cease from sin. You don't want that to happen. Go ahead. Beguiling unstable souls. Beguiling unstable souls. Go ahead. And, a heart, and hearts they have exercised with covetousness, practices, uh -huh. cursed children. Cursed children. See, that's the way the world is now. Go to, uh, go to, uh, Let's go to the third chapter right quick since we're here. Second Peter 3. We're going to throw this in. Second Peter 3. And we're going to pick it up at, at 10 again just to show you what I was saying. How this thing going to end because of all this wicked. We're just going to throw this in. Second Peter 3 and 10. Go ahead. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. In the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. Uh -huh. And the element shall melt with fervent heat. See, I wanted to show you he's going to burn it down for real just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's how bad it is. He can't do nothing else with it. Go ahead. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. See, uh-huh. Go ahead. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are ye to be in all holy, holy 
conversations in godliness. Uh-huh. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervor and heat. See, that's what's getting ready to happen. This is what Jesus is coming to do. People talking about going to heaven. No, he's going to burn this down and fix it right. After he melt everything, then it'll be clean. Go ahead. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, uh -huh. wherein dwelling righteousness. See, he's going to fix it after he burn it down. He ain't going to burn absolutely everybody. But as a whole, there ain't going to be but a handful of people left, and he's going to fix it and make it righteous after that. On the earth, his kingdom is coming to the earth, 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, mm -hmm. be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blame. So that means we don't have to be going to where the world, fornicating and stealing and killing and all that, do we? We can be diligent, but you got to be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blame. So you got to be on top of that. Now go to back to the lesson, 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. Second Corinthians 12, we're going to read one verse. Verse 21. Because Paul was telling some people they need to repent of that stuff even in the Corinthian church. See, he wasn't going to go and kill nobody, but he was going to put them in check. That shows you stuff can happen anywhere. Sometimes stuff can happen around here. People think, well, you know, that shouldn't happen there. They got the word. Look, they had the word right here. And Paul had to deal. You just got to deal with it. 21, 2 Corinthians 12 and 21. Unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you, mm -hmm. and that I shall be well many which have sinned already. Paul said, when I get back over there, because he was traveling around, traveling around, he said, when I come again, my God shall humble me, and I shall do what? Be well many which have sinned already. Go ahead. And have not repented of the And have way. not repented. See, you can make a mistake, but don't fool yourself and make it like it's okay. You can repent from that. And have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness. What else? And fornication. Oh, and fornication. See, that means somebody was doing it, wasn't it? Thinking it was okay. Go ahead. And lasciviousness, which they have committed. Uh-huh. Galatians 5. Gal Galatians 5. But we got all this admonition to know that we need to get away from it. That's why he told them to flee from it. Galatians 5 and verse 19. We see an example when they was committing fornication in Numbers 25, 24, 23, 24,000 people died, right? If that ain't no good example on how deadly it is, I don't know where to be. That's how God feel about it. And now he said he's going to let the wheat grow with the tares and he's going to get them all at judgment day. He's going to separate them at judgment day. Galatians 5 and 19. Read that one verse. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. See, people talking about, well, you got to be in the spirit. Yeah, and you ain't got to worry about the law, just be in the spirit. Look, if you in the spirit, you keeping the law. If not, you in the flesh and you doing these works, which is contrary to the spirit. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. We just going to get a brief. You can read the rest because it's a whole lot more. But this is at the top because this is what everybody want to do. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. What? Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. See, right together. See, that's why the Ten Commandments didn't have to say everything at one time because other commandments and statutes fall under the Ten Commandments. He said adultery, fornication, go ahead. Uncleanness, lasciviousness. Uh-huh. Now he went on to say a whole lot more, and the world is doing it all. First Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians 4. So we get all these ones. And this is all New Testament, so don't let nobody tell you you're a New Testament Christian and you ain't got to do nothing. Just like I told you before, one Gentile brother, I was driving a truck, went to a place, and he was had the little, you know, had the little tracks talking about, have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? 
I said, look, I'm trying to get saved. I'm trying to walk with God so I can get saved at the end. And he looked at me and says, it's nothing you can do. It's nothing you can do. Jesus did it all. I said, so I don't have to do nothing. No, my child, it's nothing you can do. He, he did it for you at Calvary. He did it for you. I said, so you don't think you got to keep the law to get nothing? No, you ain't got to keep it. I said, so I can sleep with your wife. Then he stopped backing up. I said, so I can, you telling me I can sleep with your wife and I'm still cool with Jesus. It's all okay. He stepped back a little bit. He said, well, he squinched up. He said, you really wouldn't want to. I said, no, what if I want to? I wasn't going to let him off the hook because he was in trouble. I said, no, what if I want to? I'm still, and he, he really just basically, in so many words, saying, I'm going to be okay. He was like, you wouldn't want to. I said, no, what if I want to? I'm still saved, right? He said, well, you saved, but you wouldn't want to. I'm like, man, either I can't. Paul's not talking about it, you won't want to, is he? Paul told him, look, don't do that mess, you're going to die. In the New Testament that he thought he believed in. Let's see what Paul said here. This is Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. Go ahead. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk to please God, so ye would abound more and more. He said, you've been taught how to walk, you need to grow in it, abound more and more, because you get better with it. It's real hard at the beginning. Anything you start new is going to be real hard. And this is talking about saving your life, so you know it's going to be hard. That's why coming to the truth is the hardest thing you're ever going to do and dealing with it. That's why churches that we have don't grow overnight like these mega churches and these false churches. Because it's easy to serve the false God. He don't require nothing. That's easy. That's why people flock there. Yeah, I like that. I'm going over there to that church. Yeah, because you ain't, it don't require nothing. But anything worth lasting is going to cost. It's going to take some time. It's going to require something, right? See, so Paul was telling them that they need, as they receive us, how ye ought to walk and to please God so you would abound more and more. You done found out, you're going to abound more and more once you find out. Verse 2. For ye know what commandments we gave. Oh, they gave some commandments, huh? They didn't just do away with the law, did they? They gave them some commandments, the Thessalonians. For ye know what commandments we gave you by what? By the Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. For this is the will of God. Uh-huh. Even your sanctification, uh -huh. that ye should abstain from fornication. Oh, you should abstain from fornication. He ain't say you saved by grace and don't worry about it. You don't want to. No, you bet not. He said, for this is the will of God. Even your sanctification, you set apart where you don't do the same stuff, even though you've done it in the past. You don't do it no more. That ye should abstain from fornication. Abstain from it. Go ahead. That every one of you should know how to possess this vessel in sanctification mm -hmm. and honor. See, he, he shows you how to possess your body. That's your vessel in sanctification and honor. Not what? Not in the lust of concupiscence, uh -huh. even as the Gentiles which know not God. See, not in the lust of the way you want to do things. The way of the world, like the Gentiles that didn't, the other Gentiles he's talking about that didn't know God. That's why he said even the Gentiles which know not God. Some brothers might try to say, well, see, he was talking to the Israelites that was among the Gentiles. No, he was talking to the Gentiles that was among some other Gentiles, the ones that didn't know God. We got all kind of scripture to prove that. That's some of these Israelites that try to kill all the Gentiles. Say the Gentiles can't be saved. So they weren't preaching the real Gentiles in the New Testament. They was preaching the lost Israelites that was like Gentiles. That is so foolish. It's too, too many scriptures kill that garbage. But now go to uh, Exodus, back to Exodus 22. The, uh, Exodus 22, back to the Old Testament. Because we're going to see, we've been warned repeatedly, warned, warned, warned about not 
fornicate, not fornicate. So I told you earlier, God gave you out even if you make a mistake. This is what you better plan. But then both people got to be in agreement with that. Because if one not in agreement with it, you, you know, somebody in trouble. That's why you really don't want to make the mistake. You want to plan things the right way. Especially in this world where people don't have no fear of God. So you could be a sister in here. And you might want to do the right thing. You didn't lay with a brother, but he don't know God. He don't care. He's not, nah, I ain't marrying you. See, now you just got yourself a blemish and a headache coming. Exodus 22, Exodus 22 and verse 16. See, God said this for a reason because he know we would do things out of order and he tried to give you a stopgap that would still help you out. Because like I said, God don't mind. He, he wanted man to have sex, right? But he wanted done in order. He wanted man to have sex. God is the one that made it feel good. We know that. But he told you this, 22 and 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and lie with her, mm -hmm. he shall surely endow her to be his See, wife. See, so God had even that covered, didn't he? And we didn't had examples of that in here. Thank God some, somebody had some sense after they had jumped the gun. Because you know they hadn't sit down and contemplated and said, because you just get hot and get frisky, and all of a sudden you didn't did it. Then you try to figure it out after you didn't did it. But now, God had that covered though. He said, you better figure it out. So he said, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his. So he had to make the agreement after the fact. He didn't even say, I mean, you didn't even have to know her name. See, he put the responsibility on the man. You didn't even have to know her name. You know, that probably gone on nowadays. People don't even know her name. Okay, you better get to know her now. He said, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, because if she was betrothed, that means already appointed for somebody else, and the covenant, she had made a covenant with somebody else, then they both was dead. They both had death coming, right? If she was betrothed. That means really she was married, even though she hadn't laid with nobody. Because, you know, they tended to try to do things in order in those days. We do most things out of order now. They just happen probably more than the regular way where people just get acquainted, get to know each other, and then say we're going to get married, and then lay together. We land together, then we got to figure it out. That's, that's really not the right order, but God gave you a stopgap if it happened that way, so it wouldn't be fornication. You could make it right after the fact, but you had to make it right. It don't, it don't matter how you feel. Don't matter. Brothers and said, well, I don't really love her. Love, love, she sang a song. What's love got to do with it? This is what he said right here. Brothers come up with all kinds of excuses. See, and he put the responsibility on the man, didn't he? Verse 16, read it again. And if a man enticed a maid, that is not betrothed, mm -hmm. and lie with her. That means they sleep together, right? They slept together. They went on ahead and had some fun, but after the fun is over, now the work going to start. Go ahead. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. See, he had to do it, but that would save you from committing fornication. That would save you. Just like, you know, we got some young people in here. I know some other young people don't go to this class. They're smart enough to do the right thing. And even had some people wondering, well, what, what they doing? What, they, they too young to be doing that. No, they ain't too young to sleep together. They ain't too young to get married. That's what you need to do. Hey, if you 14 and 15, you need to, you might as well, you thinking about sex, think about marriage. Think about it. You can be 14 and get pregnant, right? 
See, they didn't go for all that foolishness in the old days where you just sleep around and wait till you find the right one. That's foolishness. But if you say, well, I'm, I think I'm too young for that, then don't go on the playing field. Ain't no need of going on the playing field. Like I was crazy. I had mean, been through all that stuff in the world anyway. Then even once I got in the world, I was hanging with some brothers, you know, and they, you know, because ain't nothing really wrong. Ain't nothing even wrong with going to a bar, technically. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but you're going to, nine out of ten, you're going to be doing the wrong thing. Or going to a club to dance. I was hanging with some brothers doing that, going to clubs. And I had to catch myself, and they might be straight. Maybe they was okay. I don't know. But I know me. I said, look, I ain't no need of me coming to a club because I know when I used to come to a club what I was coming to the club for. So I need to stop this foolishness. Why am I going on the playing field? I don't want to catch the ball. Even a woman start hitting on you, you looking like you gay now. Well, <laughs> then you... Then you're going to be out there trying to have to prove yourself. <laughs> Ain't no need even going on the field. So that's the same thing with if you ain't ready to be married. Ain't no need to be trying to, you know, like even they talk about dating and stuff. Look, you can, you can pretty much get to know somebody from a distance. If you ain't ready to make no commitment, period, ain't no need of getting to know nobody. Ain't no need of dating and boyfriend and girlfriend and all that. Like somebody was telling me, that ain't in the Bible, is it? You either going to do it or you not. See, that's what we're going to start doing. We're going to start arranging marriages. When they two, they going to marry them. You two or you three get to know each other. <laughs> That's what needs to be done, though. Read it again, though. 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed mm -hmm. and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. See, he had to go all the way. The old saying, you know, you couldn't taste the milk without buying the cow. You had to go all the way, right? And the responsibility was on the man. If the, if the man didn't do it, just like you had some examples in the Bible, you had a woman that wanted to do it. It was already out of order the way it was because they was brother and sister. But see, some things supersede other things. The woman was smart enough to say, look, well, we know that can be thrown out the window because we didn't already, you didn't went too far. Basically, he raped the woman. She was telling him, no, 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 no. But she shouldn't have put herself in that predicament. Well, she, she ain't really had no choice. Her father sent her there. So that was, she was just out of order. He, the situation was out of order. But anyway, she was saying, no, no, no. He, and he, he forced her. And then she was saying, okay, well, we might as well go all the way. Now get out of here. Lock the door. Lock the door behind her. See? But then she... She went on here and lived her life. He died. He got killed two years later. Let's show you how the Lord feel about that. But now 17, because even in this case, since it's out of order, some correction could have went on. Go ahead, 17. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgin. See, that's unheard of nowadays. What, virgin? But that's the way it's supposed to be. That's what... We shouldn't be looking to have sex until we're ready to get married. Now, go to, uh, that would be the way out, 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. So this will help you avoid fornication. How would it help you avoid fornication? Even if you fix it in your mind that, look, if I put myself in a position and I make a mistake, I'm going to have to live with that the rest of my life and be with that person. And if you're looking like, I'm not sure if I want to be with that person, that should give you some pause right there. Ain't no need of even going close to him then, is it? You need to know that for sure. But see, we put that off. We put that off because we feeling frisky. But then you ain't going to be able to put it off permanently. It's going to come back to hunt you. 
1 Corinthians 7. Back to the New Testament. Let's see if the New Testament give us the same insight. 7 and 1. Go ahead. Now concerning the things thereof we wrote unto me, mm -hmm. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. See, now Paul is saying something similar. He said they wrote some stuff unto him. They wrote a letter unto him asking him some questions about how to live the right way and about being married. And he said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. But see, everybody ain't going to be able to do that. So just plan on being married. He said it's good for a man not to touch a woman because some men and women can strictly be dedicated to God. And don't have to worry about having a spouse. It's some like that. But obviously everybody can't do that. He says, good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, he's trying to show you how to avoid fornication too. Just like we found out in Exodus, one way to avoid it. How, was it, how would you avoid it? You just slipped up and jumped the gun, get married, right? That would avoid it. That would get you off the hook after the fact. You just slipped up. Just make your mind up. He said, nevertheless, he's trying to teach you the same thing, how to avoid fornication, right? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Look, just call it a day. Right there where you at, say that's the end of it. Because else you're going to end up, that's going to be fornication, and then you're going to end up doing it again. But if you would have made that commitment right there, then that, that would have ended it, right? That's what he was telling, that's what he was saying in Exodus. See, in Exodus, when he said, let, he shall surely endow her to be his wife, that would have been the end. There wouldn't have been no fornication. But then if he, if the man went on about his business or the woman didn't want to do it, sometimes the woman is hard-headed. Because nowadays, you know, women got more rights than they had in those days. So since they got rights, women get puffed up. I don't want to be with him. I ain't with him. Uh-uh. I thought he was a better man than that. He ain't even a man. Look, you should have thought about that too. So some women don't, they don't want to follow through on what they need to do. But then it ain't like they're going to want to be by themselves, so later on they're going to end up doing it again and doing it again, and it just be a mess across the board. See, God don't like that. That's why he had that in there. Look, even if you didn't lay together and hadn't planned to be together, you need to plan it now. He said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own. So you might think you can be by yourself, but if you're having a problem, then just plan to get be married. And definitely if you didn't jump the gun, ain't even nothing to talk about when you didn't jump the gun, is it? Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, mm -hmm. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Go ahead. The wife has not power of her own body, mm -hmm. but the husband. And likewise also the husband has not power of his own body, but the wife. Mm -hmm. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, mm -hmm. that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. See, now he even telling you, to go ahead and be married and do, do what married folks do and you can take a break if you're going to focus on the Lord. That's good to do. He said you can consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and then come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. So that's good. Just like they talk about but nowadays some of us be lucky we make it a week doing that. You can be married, but it talk about a woman in Numbers who was married and didn't lay with her husband. They didn't lay together for seven years, it said. But that was to focus on the Lord, to be closer to the Lord. That's good. That's what he's talking about there, but keep reading. Verse 6. 
Mm -hmm. But I speak this by permission and not command. Uh -huh. For I would not that all men were, for I would that all men were even as myself. See, he said that's by permission, because really all men couldn't be as he was, and that was a eunuch or not have a wife. All men couldn't do that, but you know, everybody could focus on the Lord if that was the case. Because you can't help but be distracted and deal when you got a spouse, you got a husband or a wife. Go ahead. But every man ha man has his proper gift of God. Mm -hmm. One after this matter and mm -hmm. another after that. Go ahead. I say therefore to the unmarried and widow, mm -hmm. it is good for them if they abide even as I. Uh -huh. But if they cannot contain that they're married, uh -huh. it's better to marry than to burn. See, he said to the unmarried and widows, it's good if they just stay unmarried then, right? If you got the opportunity, that's good. And if you can handle it, but he's still trying to make sure you don't get caught in fornication. So he said, but if they cannot contain, if you can't contain, he said, let them marry. So this is a way to avoid fornication, right? For it is better to marry than to burn. He talking about burning in hell. Go ahead. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And unto the Mary I command, yet not I, but the Lord. See, and once you get married and realize, you realize that that's for life. There ain't no way out of that. Go ahead. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Mm -hmm. Now, let not the wife depart from her husband, because sometimes we get married and we don't like the situation, but that's because we didn't even consider it because we just slept with somebody and didn't consider it at that time right but now you got to deal with what you got to deal with got women that have a problem with a man and men that have a problem with a woman say oh no nah, I can't I can't be with her but it's too late for that that's why he said let not the wife depart from her husband then if it's that bad he says something else that always makes somebody pause a minute Go ahead. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, mm -hmm. or, be re or be reconciled to her husband, mm -hmm. and let not the husband put away his wife. See, so he said, even if it, it, it was that bad where you ended up departing, he said, just stay unmarried. And then, hey, don't, don't nobody want to do that. So you got one or the other, though. Back up now to verse 2 and read it again. Go ahead. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So it's some, it's some ways to avoid fornication, is it? That is, just be married. Then if you want to, you can have all the sex you want to. That's what he's saying. But he wanted to be done. He wants you to be commitment, committed. Proverbs 5. Proverbs 5 and verse 15. Proverbs 5 and verse 15. Proverbs 5 and verse 15. See, if you if you make up your mind and, and get married, even if it's after the fact you make up your mind and do that, then that will be yours for the duration and you won't have to worry about fornicating. You shouldn't want to go outside of that, but sometimes that, that still don't be enough. So that causes problems. But go ahead, 15, he's going to tell you about that. 5 and 15, go ahead. Drink waters out of thy own system mm -hmm. and running waters out of thy own will. Mm -hmm. Let the fountains be dispersed abroad mm -hmm. and rivers of waters in so he, so he telling you the same thing that Paul told us, just go ahead and get married. Have you a wife instead of fornicating, or have you a husband instead of fornicating, right? Drink waters out of thy own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. Go ahead, let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Go ahead. Let them be only thy own, and not strangers with thee. See, that's what he was saying, have your own, right? 
and not strangers with thee. Go ahead. Let thy fountains be blessed mm -hmm. and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. See, he's saying rejoice. He's talking about marriage, isn't he? Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Go ahead. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant rope. Let her breast satisfy thee all time, mm -hmm. and thou be ravished always with her love. See, that if you do that, that'll keep you from just fornicating from woman to woman or committing adultery with another man's wife. Let her be as the loving hind and the pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee. See, the Lord even talking about some sexual stuff in the Bible, but he's talking about doing it in, in the right order, right? Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant row. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. It's just like somebody say, well, you know, I told you they need to start realizing what they're going to do at a young age. Because kids real young start hearing about sexual stuff on TV and all in this world. Talking about it. You don't have to get too old. They start hearing about it. And it's been that way. It ain't just in, our, in the kids' age nowadays. You know about that stuff by the time you get old enough to know anything. Five, six years old, you know that. You, you already know. So they need to know the way it needs to go. Go ahead. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. And why would thou, my son, be ravaged with a strange woman mm -hmm. and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Uh -huh. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord. He pondereth all his doings. So now he's telling you to make it right. Go to uh, Matthew 19 now. Old Testament, New Testament, you, there is no way around it. You're going to make sure that you don't get caught up in fornication. Matthew 19. But if you'd have done away with the law, Ain't no reason for us to even talk about that. But we know that's not true. 19 and 19. Matthew 19 and 19. Because once you get married, that's a wrap. Man got an easy way out of everything. You can get married and get divorced before the ink is even dry. But this is what Jesus said, 19 and 19. Go ahead. Nine, I'm sorry. Yep. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication. See, that's the only way, loophole, he letting you out of marriage to put away your wife or for a woman to leave. It ain't no way out. He said, whosoever put away his wife except it be for fornication. See, this is another way you can, a man could co commit adultery. A man could commit adultery by sleeping with another man's wife. That's cut and dry. That's easy. That's an easy sentence, right? But not only, that ain't the only way a man could commit adultery. A man could have a wife and don't want to be with her no more and want to get rid of her and be with somebody else. That happens all the time. Well, he said, you committing adultery then and you making more adultery. You making more fornication. Read it again, verse 9. I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife and said to be for fornication. Well, that would have been an out if your wife had did something behind your back. That would have been an out for you. That's why he said, except to be for fornication, because God's not going to let make the man stay in that situation. But that's the only out for him. He said, except to be for fornication, he put away his wife and do what? And shall marry another. And marry another. What is he doing? Committed adultery. See, he committing adultery. And what else is he causing his wife to do that he putting away? Go ahead. And whoso marries her which is put away doth commit adultery. And whoso marries her which is put away doth commit adultery. Now, a lot of people come to me and they say, well, you know, I done done this already. I done done this, you know. And they even be with somebody else now. And they say, you know, they just got in the word. And they say, well, you know, I done done this. I done done this. So I shouldn't be with the one I'm with. Look, you just need to stop right there and, and, and make that work. Because ain't nothing you can do about the past. The Lord can have mercy on you for the past. But you got to make it from that point. 
And he understand that he telling you from get go the way it need to go. But if you already been there and done that, ain't nothing, you can't erase that and do nothing about it. You can only start from where you at when you find out about the Lord. So, but a lot of people have been in this situation before they even found out about this in the Bible, before they even found out about the Lord, you just got to make it from that point on. But now he said you committing adultery by leaving your wife and marrying somebody else and whosoever married your wife, marries her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So it's adultery all over the place. That's why the Lord don't co-sign divorce. Go to uh, Colossians 3. We're almost done. See, it don't sound like the New Testament making it easier to do it. Colossians 3, verse 5 and 6. Colossians 3 and 5 and 6. Okay, go ahead. Mortify wherefore your members which are upon the earth. Oh, so you can do it. You can, you can put, that, put that to death. He said, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Go ahead. Fornication, uncleanness, and ordinate affection, um, evil concupiscence, uh -huh. and covetousness, which is idolatry. He, for things, go ahead. For which things, for which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience. See, say, mortify your members which are upon the earth. That means the stuff that you done before, you put that to rest. And he named the stuff. He said fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. That's what people say. Well, you know, it's just love between a man and a man. But he letting you know that's inordinate affection. That's unnatural affection. It shouldn't be that way. It can't, it don't even look right. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous, which is idolatry. He said, leave all that alone. Even if you didn't done it, which we all have done something, he's saying, leave it alone. And you think that it's going to be okay. What he said, verse 6 again? For which thing? Take the wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience. See, if people knew this, maybe they have some incentive to stop because he's telling you this is the reason why the wrath of God is coming. We read a little bit about it in 2 Peter 3. We threw that in there about how he's going to come and he's going to burn it down, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, he's telling you again, how are you going to think it's okay when he said, for which thing's sake the wrath of God cometh? on the children of disobedience. So you want to be a part of that? Because we saw that God will kill for this stuff. He killed 24, 23,000, didn't he? Go to Ephesians 5, and one more after this. Ephesians 5. All this the New Testament, though. That's why I say, if you if you calling yourself a New Testament Christian, doing away with the Old Testament, you're not even a New Testament Christian. Because the Old Testament is telling you how you need to be, and the New Testament is going along with it. So you would have to be a Bible Christian anyway. That's, all you, that's why people don't, don't believe. Ephesians 5 and 2, though. Go ahead. And walk in love, as mm -hmm. Christ also has loved us. Now, that's what we call to do. People say, oh, well, all we got to do is walk in love. But he's going to tell you what he means by walk in love. See, you might mean something else. God got his definition of how to walk in love. Paul going to tell us, walk in love as Christ also have loved us and did what? And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. That means Jesus died for us, right? That's what people say. Well, he died for my sins. Well, what you got to do? I ain't got to do nothing. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. He died. He did it all. You ain't got nothing to do. Look, you, Paul didn't think that. He talking about Jesus died, right? He gave himself for us as a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But now, what about you? Go ahead, three. For fornication and all unclean. He keep telling you, fornication. Mention that first most of the time. Because that's the main thing we want to do. But fornication and all uncleanness. Go ahead. And covetousness. Mm -hmm. Let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. He said you need to... 
put that in check. Let it not be once named among you. But he had to tell them because obviously they was prone to it, right? They could be susceptible to it. Go ahead. Neither filthiness, uh -huh. nor foolish talking, nor jesting, mm -hmm. which are not convenient, mm -hmm. but rather giving of thanks. Uh-huh, go ahead. For this ye know that no whoremonger. No whoremonger. Still talking about illegal sex. Fornication. Then he called them a whoremonger. Just like we read about whores, but it's whores and whoremongers, right? You think somebody going to get a break? Is the whore worse than the whoremonger? Uh-uh. Both of them got the same reward coming. He said, for this ye know that no whoremonger. So that means he was concerned with people knowing the Lord being a whoremonger. He was warning them. Don't be a whoremonger. Because no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor what? Nor covetous uh, man uh -huh. who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. See, he didn't tell me what that Gentile told me a long time ago, well, you just won't want to do it. You, you know, you wouldn't want to do that. He didn't tell, he didn't say that. He telling you, look, you better not do it. You can't do it or you ain't getting in. See, that Gentile, he didn't even want to say that. He wanted to try to still get me in, though I was talking about sleeping with his wife. He was trying to figure out a way. He said, well, you'd be, you be okay, but you wouldn't want to do it. You wouldn't want to do it. I said, no, what if I want to? I'm, a, I'm still saved, and Jesus is not going to do nothing to me, is it? He really wanted it to be that way. But Paul is telling us another way. He said, look, you better know this, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. He don't have nothing coming, do he? And just in case somebody try to tell you with some smooth, nice words that you say by grace and don't worry about it, what did he say in verse 6? Let no man deceive you with vain words. See, those are vain words they're telling you. Every Sunday, they're giving people a lot of vain words to make them feel okay. They've been fornicating Saturday night, and they make them feel better about it Sunday. That's why they don't get into no Bible. They just sing some songs and pass the plate. You will pay for that because you feel better. You've been fornicating Saturday night, then you go to church and sleep through church and pay your tithes, or some of them get emotional sing and cry he said let no man deceive you with vain words why for, be, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience see it's this, see now God not going to necessarily on the spot kill 24,000 right but he going to kill everybody that's caught up in it in the end isn't he he keep telling you about the wrath of God is coming the wrath of God is coming See, that's why the Bible say we continue to do things because it's not executed speedily, but it's going to get executed, isn't it? Judgment against the evil work is eventually going to get executed. So don't let nobody see you with vain words because of these things, because of what things? Being a whoremonger, fornicating, and all the other sins. Because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of of disobedience. One more place, Revelation 21. Let's go all the way to the end and see. Revelation 21 and verse 7. 21 and 7. See, and no matter how difficult it may seem in this world to do what God is saying do, you can do it. That's why he said you got to overcome. You can do it. Because remember, you can do all things through Christ that's strengthening you. Revelation 21 and verse 7. Go ahead. He that overcometh. See, he that overcometh. That means you can overcome. But it ain't going to be a cakewalk, cakewalk, or else he wouldn't say he that overcometh, would he? It ain't just going to be automatic. It's just like anything else, just like you smoking crack. That's hard to overcome, ain't it? But you can overcome it. Just like I was... Smoking and drinking. 
But, hey, the Lord allowed me to overcome that for the time being. I ain't going to act like I can't go back to it because I'm not stupid like that. That's why I said for the time being. I'm saved from that right now. And it's been a long time, but I still know I can act stupid. It's been, hey, more of my life I ain't been doing than I was doing it. It seemed like I was doing it forever before I stopped. But now the bottom line is you can overcome whatever is going to keep you out of God's kingdom. And you got to overcome it. He that overcometh, though, you got to do it. If you overcome, you're going to do what? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. You're going to inherit all things. That's a beautiful thing. Go ahead. And I will be his God, uh -huh. and he shall be my son. See, that's going to be beautiful. He's going to be your God, and you're going to be his son. But you got to overcome for that, right? But now what if you don't? So much for being saved by grace and don't have to do nothing. What if you don't overcome and keep doing the things you're doing contrary to God, including fornicating? What if you don't? Go ahead. But the filth and unbelieving and the abominable. And the murderers, we know that murder is bad, right? Some people wouldn't dare think of murdering somebody. They too nice for that, but they be fornicating all over the place. That's just as deadly. He mentioned murderers. He didn't stop there, did he? Go ahead. And whoremongers. Oh, there go whoremongers again. See, he don't, God don't just mention whores. We read about some whores earlier, right? We read about a whoish woman, right? But he talked about some whoish men too, don't he? Because there wouldn't be no whores women if it wasn't for the men, right? That's why even in the one talking about the woman, he was warning the man. That he don't get tripped up by it. So he said murderers and whoremongers and what else? And sorcerers mm -hmm. and idolaters and all liars. All this stuff is bad. But the one at the head of the list, he's been talking about fornication, fornication, fornication. Go ahead. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs>